everybody, Lisa Armani here, the Breakthrough Life Coach. How are you? I hope everything's well. I'm really excited about this video that I want to bring to you today. I had an amazing conversation early in the week with um, what I think is a pretty incredible soul. And such wisdom and such clarity and such understanding came out of the conversation. Um, it uplifted her, but it also uplifted me. And I just wanted to share it with all of you who come to my channel, who have subscribed, um, and who follow my work on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and whatever, all over the place that I am. Um, and because I believe that the message is, is just so truly, truly um, inspiring, right? So let me preface this video by saying that I am of the belief that the, there is a war um, between light and dark on planet Earth. And the war, I believe, is an emotional war. And I'll tell you why. <clears throat> when I was at my worst with anxiety and depression and codependency and below the veil, as I like to say, and I didn't even know there was a veil. <clears throat> I didn't even know that um, the mind was both conscious and unconscious at the same time. No clue, no awareness that because my parents were disordered, passive aggressive, um, codependent, narcissistic, adult children of alcoholics that were unrecovered, um, control freaks, they just were, you know, they didn't know they were, but they just were, right? They um, were very stringent and, uh, you know, my father was very militant and he, he actually still to this day will brag about how soldier-like we were, right? He, did, he didn't get it. He had three children that were in survival mode, that were terrified. Um, he has no acknowledgement that we suffered from complex PTSD because every day we, we walked around in our house like we were, like the floor was made of glass. And, um, you know, we were afraid of any minute of my mother raging and um, becoming completely undone over something as simple as leaving a sock on the staircase or whatever. You know? And so I didn't know that all of that stuff, being raised that way and feeling so invisible and living in a state of survival, and it's important that we recognize as wounded adult children trying to heal, that when we feel arrested, when we feel like we are in survival mode, we are not thriving. We are surviving, and it's not the same thing. So, you know, an organism has to des decide, you know, am I going to grow in this moment, or am I going to, you know, be on high alert and, and, and uh, clomp down because I'm afraid of where the attack is going to come from, and I have to be on guard all the time. I didn't know that I was living in a state of survival. I, I didn't know that I was downloaded with this blueprint, you know, and scientists are moving closer to believing that this so-called junk DNA you know, that scientists have called this, this DNA that it, they didn't know what it actually did. It wasn't responsible for the color of our eyes or the color of our hair or the thickness of a, a fingernail. But scientists are moving closer and closer to proving that the junk DNA is that actually where we hold our programs, right? So where we hold our language programs, where we hold our beliefs and our downloads. Fascinating. Oh, my God. A little mind bending when you think about this idea that we are unconscious and consciousness at the same time and we can live our lives thinking that we're conscious but we're really not. That's like what? Like seriously? That blew my mind. I don't know about you, but it blew my mind. And so, you know, I didn't know that there was this veil. And on my journey, the more I started to, to investigate childhood homes and understanding what I miss versus what somebody from a functional home, what they received, right? You know, things just started to come together for me. When I realized I was codependent, I was like, that's a program. Being codependent is a program. And when I began to understand that the anxiety that I had and this sense of low self-esteem that I had and this depression, it was like a darkness within me. And what it did was it separated me from myself. It separated me from my God self. It separated me from Christ consciousness, right? I was so far removed from believing that I had any worth. I grew up being shamed. My mother would actually say, you should be ashamed of yourself, you know? We went to church on Sundays, and I'm sorry to all the devout Catholics out there, but we were shamed, you know? You are a sinner. You know, um, if I reached for a potato, you know, at dinner, my mother's response was, why do you want another potato? You should think about someone else. Maybe somebody else wants the extra potato. It was this overall 
message to me that I did not matter, that I was here and I was supposed to worry about everybody else but myself. And that's the way I ran my life for, for decades, right? So I'm on the healing path and I'm recovering. Okay, I get this above the veil, below the veil. I get this unawakened self and this awakened self and this awakening self. I'm beginning to understand it. And as I move forward, I began to um, realize that darkness is the, the, the battle for the soul is happening on the field of our emotions. And anything, any idea, any false belief, any situation, any trauma that happens in our lives that separates us from the self, in my opinion, is dark. It's a dark energy. And it feels like there is a war waging for our soul, right? And that this darkness within that separates us from the self, there's a danger that if we don't grab onto the light within, we'll lose our soul, that we will decelerate, that we will not grow, that we would de-evolve, we will not evolve. If we are not evolving mentally, emotionally, cognitively, we cannot evolve spiritually. So this idea, idea came to me that for, in order to survive, to survive, well not only survive, but evolve spiritually, we have to evolve emotionally. And to evolve emotionally, we have to evolve psychologically and cognitively. So what this essentially means is, well, it means a lot of things, but it means that we have to begin to address what's happening in our lives um, from a higher state of awareness we have and to, we have to be willing to look at the self and find out how have we contributed to this dynamic. Otherwise, we're going to stay stuck. So in this conversation with this young woman, who I think is absolutely fabulous, if I do say so myself, she's explaining to me that she feels stuck in her relationship with her mom. Her mom, in her opinion, is narcissistic. And through, through conversations, I, I would have to agree with her. Um, the mom was very judgmental, very critical. There was on, only room for one opinion in the room, and it was mom's. Um, this young woman would go to her mom crying and saying, you know, don't you see this? Don't you see when you say things to me like, you know, I would brag about you if there was something to brag about. When you say that to me, you make me feel unworthy. And the mom just can't see it, right? The mom is not willing to have any empathy for how her feelings have affected her child. You know, the mom is rude. The mom is aggressive. Um, and there is no empathy and there's no respect for her child. And so definitely the mom is, in my opinion, I don't know her, but it sounds like she's more narcissistic than she is, you know, empathetic for sure. And, you know, this young woman said, you know, my mom sees me as the problem. She has just identified I'm the problem. You know, I want too much. I am too needy. Um, I'm never happy. And she's, my mom seems completely okay with that perception. And it got me thinking, and through the conversation with her, I said, well, that, I think that's the problem. You know, your mom has no cognitive dissonance over this. She should. You know, you're her kid, and there should be you know, some compassion for you and there should be some divine female energy coming for you, coming in your direction where even if your mom doesn't agree with you, she's able to hold that space for you, right? I get that. It's not happening and I'm so sorry, you know, but she doesn't have any cognitive dissonance. She's totally okay with thinking that you're the problem and that's why she's not suffering. In, in this young woman's case, however, she is stuck because she is not happy with how she perceives her mom. She wants to be loved. She wants to be embraced. She wants to be understood. She wants to feel connected to her mom. She wants to feel like when she speaks, her mom's like, I get it, I'm so sorry, I hear you. How can we make this better? She wants to feel like her mom wants to meet her halfway, but her mom doesn't want to meet her halfway. Her mom wants to believe that she's the problem. Her mom is in competition with her. You know, um, the mom does not celebrate her accomplishments, accomplishments. And in fact, she suppresses them and she downplays them. It sounds like mom is arrested in like maybe adolescence, 11 or 12 years old. Um, and I, and I, I told her, I said, you know, it sounds like this two mean girls are having this conversation. Like they're trying to hurt one another, you know, um, and that's not going to work. That's going to keep you stuck. That's going to keep you below the veil. 
And that's that darkness I was talking about where I think that the war for our souls is happening in the emotional realm and we are all going to be challenged to win the war against darkness within ourselves in our relationships with selves first and when we are able to accomplish that that is when we can go out into the world and spread our light in amazing ways but until that happens we're gonna stay stuck but they're stuck because this young woman doesn't want to accept that her mom is unable to give her and love her the way she needs to be loved and which she absolutely deserved to experience. She's struggling because she's not willing to surrender to what is. Now here's the thing. She's experiencing cognitive dissonance. Again, you know, it's what I was talking about. When we want to heal and evolve spiritually, it just doesn't happen in the spiritual realm. It happens in our DNA, right? You know, we become more light body activated. There are actual DNA changes in our body as we begin to heal, right? Our brain changes. There are actual changes happening in our brain when we heal and we let go of resistance, when we, the amygdala calms down. When the amygdala is highly activated, we are stuck and we are living in the past. And whether we realize it or not, we are walking in the shadows. We are walking in the darkness. Because the past. And we have come to rise above the past and to shine brightly and to overcome any idea or any false belief that has once held us back. So in this conversation, what's beginning to resonate is this pattern with this young woman being stuck, you know, battling these issues out with her mom. And what's really happening is below this anger is the fear of abandonment. And she coined it eloquently. She says, you know, when you say that, when you say that I have to accept her for, she, for who she is, then that means that I'm alone. That means I'm never going to be able to have that connection with the person that brought me to planet Earth. And if I let go of my anger for her, I feel all alone. I feel all by myself. I feel terrified. And so she even has cognitive dissonance over letting go of the anger because it helps her feel safe, right? And also in this, in, in the locking horns with her mom and this interaction with her mom, you know, there is a dependency going on because if she lets go of that, then she has, to, she feels like the next step would be for her to move out of the house and she's old enough to do so. She's afraid of actually living on her own. So as long as she's engaged in this dialogue, then she doesn't have to really face being alone and face her oneness, right? But here's the thing. Everything that's happening in our experience is a teacher. Her mom is teaching her. Teaching her what? Teaching her to let go. Her mom is teaching her to appreciate free will. You have a choice. You can walk in the past, which is the darkness, or not. You can pick up a hot stone or not. You can leave this dynamic right where it is and let your mom evolve on her own path or not. Her mom is teaching her how to let go and how to fall into the great I am, how to merge with the Christ consciousness, and how to let go of any limiting belief that is rooted in the subconscious mind. And think about the subconscious mind as a basement. It's being dark and musty and moldy and blah, 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 blah. Who wants to live in a moldy basement? But when we are reactive, right? When we are acting out, when we are trying to punish people, and she's trying to punish her mom, and her mom's trying to punish her. When we are locked inside that dynamic, we are stuck. And yet, to evolve, the whole purpose of being a human being is to evolve spiritually to evolve consciously and to walk in love and light. And what I was able to help shift in her was the, her perception of the arguments that she was having with her mom. And I helped her, I'm hoping that what transpired was her understanding of the whole, the whole reason for being born is to overcome the shadow self, is to overcome any darkness, is to overcome any trauma. Anything that happened to us is an experience 
you know, and with the right tools and the right mindset and with the right goal, you have to know that your goal is abundance. You have to know that your goal is equanimity. You have to know that your goal is peace. Your goal is Christ consciousness. Your goal is to be able to walk in love and to walk in light and to be able to take your spiritual gifts and, and bring them to the world in a big way. That's the whole reason for being born. But when you are stuck in the past, you're not doing that. And so, you know, I love the quote by Marianne Williamson. I'll probably botch it up, but it sounds something like, until you, you know, wrestle the monsters or the darkness within, you feel like you're wrestling people outside of you, right? And so this young woman feels like she's wrestling her mom, but really what she's really wrestling is with herself, which is her lower self. Just let go. You are enough. You can live out on your own. You can make your own money. You can bring your gifts to the world. You can, but you can't attract what you want with a lack mentality. You can't, you can't attract what you really, really desire because what you desire is on a high frequency. You know, um, you can't attract light and love and abundance and merge with Christ consciousness if you are hell bent on trying to prove her wrong. You can't do it. Not be, I don't think, we will not be completely merged with spirit until we transcend and we, and we, we become one with the, the one consciousness, the, the creator of all that is. Up until then, we're going to stumble and we're going to fall and we're going to bump into walls, right? But that's where a community like this or YouTube or a Facebook community or an ACOA group or a 12-step meeting, you know, or whatever, a group meeting you know, uh, work with a therapist, whatever. That's where we can come together and learn how to be vulnerable and learn how to say, this is, this is where I'm at, where are you, and help one another up. Because the, there is, in my, in my opinion, there is a battle between light and dark on this planet. And it's happening in the emotional realm. And it happens on the individual plane first, between me and me. And think about all the people that we've lost to suicide. Think about all the people that we've lost to drug addiction and drug overdoses. Think about all the people that we've lost, you know, in unhealthy dynamics, alcoholism, you name it, bulimia, anorexia. Think, just think about, think about our prison systems. You know, think about the shame and the guilt and the anger and the resentment that prevents a soul from being able to merge with the Christ consciousness. Just think about it. And so the battle for light, light and dark is real, in my opinion. It is happening within each individual. And the reason we are born is to overcome the shadows within. Everything that happens outside of us is for our benefit. Everything. Especially the prickly stuff, right? Because it's an opportunity for us to say, no, I am not that. I know who I am. No, I do not wish to engage with this. I wish to engage with unity consciousness. No, I don't want to pick up that hot stone. I'll leave it right where it is. I want to, I want to live in love and in light and peace. I want to live in that space. I want to live merging myself with higher self so that I can continue to be a beacon of love and light energy. That's the whole purpose. And so we have to learn to heal the darkness within. And we do that by learning how to let go, by becoming wiser and wiser and wiser more rational, less reactive, more understanding of self, more understanding of others. We do our work and we do it humbly. We do it because we know that it's helping move us to a Christ consciousness and it's helping heal the planet. That's a whole purpose. That's the whole big reason for being born is to help move humanity's consciousness forward. This is what Eckhart Tolle's work is all about. Very much Oprah Winfrey, what she talks about. Deepak Chopra, so met Wayne Dyer, Louise Hay, you know, Jack Canfield, you know, all of these greats are talking about moving conscious, Brene Brown, another one, moving our consciousness forward and evolving. And so I hope that you are encouraged to, you know, when you think about the darkness that's within, within, whether it's anger, resentment, depression, anxiety, you know, eating disorders, addiction or whatever, I hope that you see it as an opportunity to overcome the darkness. I hope that you are inspired to say, wait a minute, wait a minute. 
Nobody is going to be the boss over me. Darkness is not going to win. I want to move towards the light. I want to live in peace. I want to evolve spiritually and emotionally, consciously and cognitively. I want my body to be a beacon of love and light energy. I want to help move consciousness forward. That's what I want to do. That's what I want to do. And in the doing of that, you will absolutely attract abundance. And abundance just isn't about stuff, right? That's Abundance is you'll attract abundance of love, abundance of peace, abundance of joy, abundance of bliss. You'll come up with creative ideas on how to move yourself forward, maybe a business idea. The right people will show up at the right time. That's abundance. You'll notice more hummingbirds. That's abundance. You'll notice more butterflies. That's abundance. You know, you'll make money. You'll make profits. It'll be almost impossible for you not to once you get to that point, once you're really shining in love and light. So the goal is to merge with the unity consciousness, to merge with the Christ consciousness, to merge with the I am that I am. Every cell of your being. Every cell of your being holds the essence of the I am that I am, right? But when we are codependent, when we are attracting narcissistic people into our lives, you know, when we're in difficult relationships, you know, when we're being emotionally manipulated or abused, it can be difficult when the amygdala gets triggered to remember that you are an extension of the I am that I am and that you have come to overcome the darkness. And when you overcome the darkness within, you have an opportunity to shine so brightly and affect so many other people. So I encourage you to be fearless and to don't worry about what other people think. Do your own stuff. Do your own journey. Do your own walk. Pay attention to you. This is between you and your God self, right? Between you and creator. Nobody else. Everybody else, they're just teachers. Try to see what's happening in your life as an opportunity to remember that you are enough that you are enough, that you absolutely are enough. And I promise you, in a short amount of time, you will feel better, you will feel lighter, you'll have more mental clarity than you ever had in your life. You're going to have more energy. You're going to be, you know, there'll be a spring in your step when you overcome another aspect of the darkness. We have the ability to win as beings of love and of light and those of us who speak the language of love and light. We have the ability to win. And I am so grateful that you are here. And if you heard this message, then this, this message was absolute for you. So let me know what you think in the comments below and keep your questions coming. I love hearing from you. This is your channel. I want to serve you. I want to know what you need the most. So whatever you're struggling with, I want to know. I want to be able to serve you. Please feel free to follow me on Instagram, on Facebook. Um, you can find out more about my membership site at https dot dot slash slash lisa dash a dash romano dot dot com. Um, it's a monthly membership uh, subscription. It cancel at any time. I just like the idea of providing a membership site that is full of tools, healing tools, because I like the idea of people having access to healing information like that. It just helps us stay on the healing path. I Listen, I'm surrounded by healing books. I have my own library of healing books. I know that I'm a human being and I know that I'm here to continually, continually evolve. So I never think that I know everything. Never. I'm always looking to learn and to be a student. And I want to pass along what I learn to all of you lovely dear ones. So thank you for showing up. Thank you for being here. And thank you for being, being willing to overcome the darkness within to let go of the attachments, to stop expecting people to be what you want them to be, and to recognize that when somebody isn't what you want them to be, it's your opportunity to resonate with something much greater and much, much stronger and much brighter. So I hope this information has helped you feel better about yourself and your journey, dear ones. Namaste. I bow to the love and the light that is absolutely within you. Bye for now.